Hello there, I'm Cass, and it's that time of year again where everybody is sipping out their tops and their bonds of 2012. And I am not going to be doing that. Nope. Instead, I decided why talk about the games that everybody else is going to be talking about. Instead, why not talk about the games that nobody else is talking about, or the games that I wanted to talk about, but can't because I never played them or didn't get the chance to play them. Now, this is going to be a list based on games that were released in 2012. So anything like Tomb Raider or, I don't know, Zone of the Enders HD that were either released already or haven't been released that were slated for this year are not going to be on this one. That being said, this is the top 10 games of 2012 that I wish I played. When you wish upon a star, makes no difference who you are. So you take a visual design similar to Cave Story, a mechanic reminiscent of Warrior Land by switching dimensions, and mix it up with some fresh new ideas and you get Fez. So why didn't I play this one? Well, aside from the creator's racist comment about the Japanese, I just feel the whole new retro movement is overstaying its welcome, and Fez, as good as it may be, may just be its end point. When you wish upon a star, makes no difference Number nine. who you are. So Agent 47 is back, and let's make this one quick. The answer to why I didn't give this one a shot is admittedly an immature one, but it's five words. The Summer of Square Enix. After slogging through nine titles and a tenth one that will remain unnamed as a cancelled bonus, I was burnt out from anything from Square Enix. Everything that could have gone wrong in the summer did, and events kept unfolding, making it a very awkward summer for me indeed. Also, what was up with that trailer? Who taught these nuns to be such lethal assassins? When you wish upon a star Number 8 Makes no difference who you are If there was one series on the list that had a perfect balance to storytelling and intelligent design from gameplay, that would be Professor Layden. The good old professor and his sidekick Luke finally jumped into the 3D, and I'll be 100% honest, I was not a fan of the look. Don't get me wrong, it didn't look bad. Heck, it looked pretty damn good for the 3DS. But there was something about it, something off, that just kept me from picking it up and experiencing the Professor's 3D debut and instead continued to wait for Professor Layden and Phoenix Wright's world to collide. Man, it's gonna take a miracle to get that game out of Japan. When you wish upon a star Number 7 Makes no difference who you are Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, Bethesda had me drooling all over their titles, making me anticipate their next title with bated breath. This year's title that they had was a first-person action-adventure title where you stab people. Sign me up for Dishonored. Only one problem. I had no idea if an idea like this could work, or would work, in the first person. And anyone who knows me knows that I don't read reviews on titles that I'm interested in to go in with a fresh, non-biased mind when they first come out. So I passed on Dishonored for the time being. Well. That and the developers Arcade Studios helped design some of the levels in Bioshock 2, so... Not exactly an impressive resume, but not exactly shameful. It just didn't help their case. Now that Bethesda is making it into a franchise, hopefully the next Dishonored won't bring dishonor to me for not having to play it. But Bethesda, Arcane Studios, here's some advice for the future. STOP MAKING YOUR MAIN CHARACTERS PRISONERS! Seriously, is there a fetish for the incarcerated that I don't know about? When you wish upon a star Number 6 Makes no difference who you are Ironically, the highest rated game by critics, not that it matters, is the middle point for this list. I'll admit, the reason why I didn't play this one or pick it up was because... How do I put this lightly? The fans' poor reception to the ending and the movement following said reception took away my enthusiasm for Shepard and his crew. 
Look, say what you will about the ending and the Mass Effect movement, but the whole fan backlash from this got sickening to hear on both sides. It ruined my experience as a casual fan to hear all this whining about an ending to a game, and took away what interest that I had in completing my previous Mass Effect adventures in anticipation for Mass Effect 3. Seeing how much fuss was made over a game story to the point where the developers had to change the ending, I felt I just didn't want to be a part of this fanbase, nor to be associated with such. Sorry guys, but this earth was not worth retaking. When you wish upon a star, Number 5 Makes no difference who you are. Imagine River City Ransom combined with Grand Theft Auto. Sounds great, right? Well, that's exactly what Retro City Rampage was. In homage to the classics of old and a parody of modern titles like Explosion Man, Retro City Rampage had everything going for it to be a fun, do what you want when you want title. What more is there to say? When you wish upon a star, number four, makes no difference who you are. I have no excuse for not getting this game. A return of the classic strategic series XCOM because of backlash from the Bioshock like first person shooter reboot, and it was supposedly really good? How did I not get this game? I don't know, and I'm frankly ashamed that I didn't pick it up yet. I hope to pick this game up as soon as possible and make amends for my mistake, but for now, XCOM Enemy Unknown is on my grid. When you wish upon a star, Number 3 Makes no difference who you are Okay, this is cheating seeing how it's a console and not a game, but I feel that Sony's new handle deserves a spot on this list. New technology is always a nice thing, and between the Wii U and the Vita, I was honestly more interested in Sony's new handheld technology than Nintendo's new console with the name that sounds like the sound that a fire truck makes. Aside from the phenomenal specs, the Vita sported a lot of great technology behind it, like a pair of sticks, a gyroscope, and not one, but two touchscreens on the front and the back that gave Nintendo a run for its money on handheld dominance. What it lacked were games that were worth purchasing for it. Hey, hey, don't get me wrong, some of the games were interesting, like Uncharted Golden Abyss and Sound Shapes, but none of them felt like they were necessary enough for me to have them on the go. They felt like inferior versions of console experiences, so why not play them on a console for just a couple bucks more and get a superior experience? Besides, announcing a price cut for 2013, before 2013, not a smart move. That being said, the game for the Vita that I was looking forward to the most was Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation, a sort of interesting take on the female side of American Revolution while preserving the assassin in Assassin's Creed. So if you have a problem with me putting a system on this list, then hey, consider that the entry. The PS Vita may be on life support, but competition drives others to do better, right guys? Viva la Vita! When you wish upon a star, number two, makes no difference who you are. After Elder Scrolls V Skyrim was released and blew everybody away, there were two titles that came to challenge its dominance in Western free roaming RPGs, Dragon's Dogma and Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. Between the two, Kingdoms of Amalur had the most appeal to me with its colorful environments, excellent combat, and not being made by a company run by monkeys. However, the interest in Amalur reaches far beyond just the game, but the whole legal issues and financial troubles, the whole story behind 38 Studios, and their unfortunate closing in Rhode Island. The story of Kingdoms of Amalur and 38 Studios' bankruptcy was by far the saddest and, in my opinion, the biggest this year. One studio, one new game that critics and gamers love, but just didn't sell enough, and now 38 Studios is no more, and former pitcher Kurt Schilling's dream is now no more. Thankfully, Epic hired a few of the former employees, but to those who have been less unfortunate, I hope the best for you. Oh, and in case the governor of Rhode Island does come across this video for some reason, maybe you shouldn't have wasted millions of taxpayers' dollars investing in the studio in the first place! Hey, the situation isn't black and white. There's plenty of blame to go around on all parts, but there's a beginning to this chain of events. And that, my friends, is what really grinds my gears. When you wish upon a star, Number one. Makes no difference who you are. If there's one thing that you should have picked up by now, it's that I love RPGs. Specifically, Japanese RPGs, or JRPGs to be short. However, this generation started to remove my passion for the genre, as more and more games in it just became less and less interesting. There are of course exceptions, but 
On the whole, the genre seems to be more about narrative than about the gameplay with no regard for quality on either aspect. Even the Japanese RPGs that I've come to appreciate for this generation, I have to admit, a fair amount of them suffer from this favoring of style over actual substance, characters that become more dark, angsty, and all around less likable, stagnant and repetitive gameplay, and plots so predictable, you can point on every character's role in the first five minutes. I may love JRPGs, but I also love to see them change, to see the genre evolve and improve over the years from its roots rather than staying at the same level it's been on for years. And that is where the last story comes in. It had everything going for it. Legendary designer Hironobu Sakaguchi, composer Nobuo Uematsu, the talented folks at Mistwalker responsible for Ash, and a collaboration with AQ Interactive. All of this behind a new JRPG series with a romantic tale fit for classic Final Fantasy. While Xenoblade Chronicles looked to put an interesting twist on real-time battles, and Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning and 38 Studios' subsequent demise may have been the biggest gaming story this year, to me, the biggest event that happened was the release of The Last Story, a game that had a vast amount of issues coming out to the West. While the original Japanese releases of The Last Story and two other titles, like Xenoblade Chronicles and Pandora's Tower, were published by Nintendo, in North America, Nintendo stated that they had no plans to release any of the titles anytime soon there. Their choice led to a group of fans getting together and forming a group called Operation Rainfall in 2011. Through a letter campaign, Amazon sales, and by other legal means, they tried to convince Nintendo that there was a market to be profitable enough for them to release the games over here. And it worked! As of now, two of the three games have been released. Even though the last story was localized by Exceed instead of the Big N, it was still brought over to the West, and it became their most successful title yet. The whole Operation Rainfall movement was so inspirational that so many people could come together and get not just one, but three games brought over for people to experience it worldwide. It inspired me to become more involved in the gaming community and to return to reviewing games. But most importantly, I wanted to see to it that the Wii Swan Song would get the attention it deserved from me and from everybody else. But I never reviewed The Last Story or Xenoblade Chronicles, nor did I mention either of them at all. So why didn't I pick it up? What is wrong with me for passing up this much anticipated title? For what some have described as what Final Fantasy would be if Hironobu Sakaguchi had stayed with Square, the last story is the last game on this list of regrets. So those are the games of 2012 that I wish I had played. Are there any games that you wish you had played or wanted to play but didn't get a chance to? Post them in the comment section below, the games that you wanted to, and why exactly you wanted to play them. For me, the games that I want to play are, uh, right here. So, until next time, game on, my friends. The time is almost here. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, subscribe! If you didn't, then there are no refunds and you just wasted about 10 minutes of your time.